First of all, just go ahead and find the images that you want to merge into HDR. These images can be in any common format, including JPEG, TIFF, or RAW files, as I have here. Here I use Adobe Bridge to visualize the bracketed images taken at different exposures. You can use any software to visualize and organize your pictures. There are several free softwares for this purpose, including Google Picasa. Here in Bridge, you can easily look at your metadata, which gives information about your shooting settings. These images of Golden Gate Bridge are shot at Aperture F11 and ISO 100. Now, go ahead and open Photomatix to load the images for creating HDR. In Photomatix, which is the version 4 by the end of 2010, there is a shortcut menu on the left. All we need to do can be accessed quickly from this menu. If you would like to create only one HDR image quickly, we will use the first two shortcuts, load bracketed photos and tone mapping. However, if we would like to make several HDR images, we can use batch options either batch bracketed photos or batch single photos. Settings used for any single HDR can be saved and applied to other HDR processes. To start generating single HDR images, now just go ahead and click load bracketed photos. From the window open, just browse to your images, select them and load them. In this window, you will see only one option to choose show intermediary 32-bit image. Keep this on that we can analyze the histogram of 32-bit image before processing it with tone mapping. When you click OK, you will see a window with pre-processing options. In this menu, keep a line source images on with by correcting horizontal and vertical shifts and crop align images. To produce a quick HDR, just leave reduce ghosting artifacts off or you can choose it as automatic. Leave the reduce noise option off since either you can use Photomatics later to reduce the noise or you can use other softwares like Lightroom or Noise Ninja. It is suggested from the company producing Photomatics that you keep the radius chromatic aberrations on as a default, which I found OK. And also to produce a quick HDR, just do not bother yourself with RAW conversion settings, which will appear only if you open RAW images. It is also important to mention that using other programs like your camera software, Lightroom or Photoshop will result in much better conversions. Therefore, you would not most probably use this menu unless you don't have any other programs to convert your images into JPEG or TIFF. Okay, we are ready. Now just go ahead and click Preprocess. This will convert the images into JPEGs, then it will align the images, and then it will merge them into 32-bit HDR image. The result of this merging 32-bit image will not look great at all compared to the ones that you always see around in the web. Don't panic. There is one more step to go, that is tone mapping. Here we cannot see the details of the 32-bit image because our monitors do not allow this. They don't have enough dynamic range to show 32-bit photos. Therefore, we do tone mapping. Before doing tone mapping, just have a look at the histogram of the 32-bit image. From Photomatics menu, go to View and choose HDR histogram. This histogram will show you the brightness values at logarithmic scale. The most important value here to pay attention is the estimated dynamic range. If this value is greater than about 500, this means your image will is worthy to proceed with tone mapping. If it is lower, that means HDR image will not bring much information into your photo since it has a low dynamic range. However, tone mapping can re still result 
in artistic painterly-looking images from low dynamic range captures. Here we have a pretty high dynamic range with 22,000 for this sample. Now we are ready. Let's just proceed for the tone mapping. <laughs> 